Hey there, BitCash crew. I'm ADP. Happy Thursday to all of you good folks out there. Today, I'm going to be talking to you all out there about two really exciting altcoins. Uh, the first one is called Steam, and the other one is called Nano. I'm also going to be talking about an ICO coming out in the next few months called Block Lancer. So it's going to be a really exciting show. Strap in and let's get started. Fantastic. So let's kick off the show today with this really exciting altcoin called Steam. And now I'm back to Steemit, which is the social media platform. Now I'm going to rest here while I do this presentation today for a couple of reasons, mainly because this is really what it all focuses on. The focus for this altcoin is really about this social media platform and the blockchain is sort of this groovy offshoot. So we're going to talk a little bit about both and, you know, see where this altcoin may be going in the future. So with Steemit, which is the social media platform, the more you contribute, the more you post, and the, the more good content you post, and the more you help curate the site, uh, the more income you earn, the more steam you earn, which is your cryptocurrency. Uh, which is, is kind of interesting. The other thing that does happen is the more you contribute to the growth of the website, um, the more voting power you have. Because you're essentially, you have a, a bunch of people who, when they reach critical mass in their power, they almost, almost have the power of what an editor may have on, say, like a Huffington Post kind of thing or, or something of that nature. Now, according to Steam's website, they can run thousands of transactions per second, which is pretty damn exciting. Um, I don't think they're quite at the computing power of, say, a Facebook or a Twitter, but they're probably not far behind, and they say they're really scalable. So this may grow a lot in the future, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm all for more competition in the marketplace, so that would be cool to have another really interesting competitor, especially a blockchain-based one in the world of social media. It's pretty exciting. And of course, it's been a pretty heavy mover. So today it pumped up about 15%, which is a really, really serious gain. There are still a few things that do concern me with this altcoin. Um, the main one that came to mind when I was reading through all the material was if a single curator gets a lot, a lot of power, how does that affect the rest of the community? You know, if one person is just curating and contributing in, in some amazing way and they have the ability to vote up or down on whatever the content is, do they really take control of the social media platform? And if that happens, then how does it affect the rest of the community? So that was my biggest concern. That being said, I mean, I'm always excited for, as I said before, new ideas and new competition in the marketplace. I love the idea of a blockchain-based social media platform. And at the moment, it's a mover and shaker. So let's keep an eye on it. Let's see where it goes. And um, hopefully this will be one that brings us some pretty groovy gains in the future. Moving on to our next altcoin for today, let's have a quick peek over at Nano. Cool. So Nano has been another big mover and shaker today, guys. Um, with this one, just a couple of sort of points about what makes this a pretty exciting little currency. Um, point number one, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around this, and... Um, I have been doing a bit of reading on it, and I will probably bring another update about this in the weeks to come once I'm sort of on the same page with these guys. But according to Nano and all their material, they don't have a limit on how many transactions can occur on their platform at the same time. That's pretty serious. Um, I, I want to know a little bit more about this first before I really trust that, because that's a really big claim. Um, obviously, we knew that you know the likes of Bitcoin, where we're waiting 10 minutes to refresh the blockchain, is, is just obscene. I mean, that's not going to happen. And obviously, the folks at Ethereum are talking about competing with Visa by 2019 and all that kind of stuff so far as number of transactions per second. With all that in mind, this idea of un unlimited transactions in a single second, I'm, I'm still struggling with a bit, but they might be right. Um, it might just be the, the way they've, they've set this up. So we're going to have to keep a closer on it and take probably a deeper look and then bring you some more information about this in the weeks to come. However, that's not the only thing about it that's interesting. Another thing that we're seeing more and more and more of is it's free, which seems to be just the way that all the uh, new altcoins are going. I mean, I remember seeing Roger Ver interviewed a number of times talking about Bitcoin. And, you know, Bitcoin is still charging like $10 a transaction. And I think in an earlier episode, I likened it to, to, you know, if you get a coupon to say Domino's, well, you might be able to get two pizzas for 10 bucks. 
So now effectively, you're going to pay 10 bucks per pizza because if you're paying on, on Bitcoin, then you're not saving any money. And that's ridiculous. And that's not sustainable. Um, with Bitcoin Cash, you know, they did make some advancements and it's just a few cents, which is perhaps negligible. It's certainly better than most banks if you're doing, say, an international transfer. You know, I've done business across different countries and sometimes the fee just to transfer to, um, to someone you're paying can, you know, this can be like $100 just to pay someone, which is ridiculous. So this is all moving in the right direction. I like the idea of free, which I'm seeing more and more in these altcoins. So that does excite me. And also with Nano, it's... Uh, it's shaking its booty. I mean, you can see that growth today. Uh, it's up near around 14%, which is really exciting. Anyway, that will wrap up Nano with that. I will talk about it in the weeks to come once I know a little bit more about this blockchain technology and understand why they have an unlimited number of transactions or whether they should they can sustain an unlimited number of transactions in a second. And if that is the case, I mean, this will make this a pretty serious player should they play no pun intended, uh, the rest of their cards right, you know, with the, um, you know, the promotion of their, their blockchain and, and their product. And um, let's see where it lands, because this one sounds pretty damn exciting. Fantastic. So with all that said and done, we will wrap up today's show with the review of the ICO, which is called Block Lancer. <laughs> So with Blocklancer, the really basic premise, guys and gals, is that this platform exists to bring freelancers and buyers together. So if you need a certain bit of work done, whether it's programming or, well, certainly anything in the online space, and we're probably going to see things that are, are a bit more tangible as well, like maybe it's going to be a construction project or something. But this platform will be one design that can bring these two groups of people together, uh, much the way that well, I know a lot of people watching this are, are probably too young to remember, you know, the yellow, the white pages, but um, much the way that used to be used, you know, you go out there and you find someone to employ. At the moment, we use Google for that pretty much, whether it's for a plumber or to do our grocery shopping. Um, but this is pretty exciting for the future because it's a marketplace where it's going to bring buyers and sellers together. Uh, but, and, you know, obviously the sellers are selling their labor. So that's point one is really just Right, so we have this marketplace where we have folks who are freelancers and we also have people who want to hire the services of said freelancers. So that all makes perfect, pretty sense and that's good. Now what also is interesting about this is that obviously in any marketplace there may be disputes. It's always a thing of like, well, what if the, um, the person providing a service tries to uh, F over is probably the nicest way to put it, someone who wants to buy the service. Well, what do you do to protect them? And, you know, in the... The modern world and the world we all live in, there are usually government institutions that do that. But in the world of crypto, well, that's not really the case because we have a, a decentralized and a sensibly unregulated platform. So the idea is with Blocklancer is that the actual token holders are the ones who help with the dispute resolution. So the, you'd have to go through the whole white paper to go through the nitty gritty of what they're talking about. But the way I understand it is that everyone who owns tokens essentially has sort of a buy in. Um, or I should say they can stipulate an opinion when it comes to resolving, you know, any issues that may arise between the buyers and sellers in the marketplace. I don't know how I feel about that 100%. Um, I think that a mob of people can be just as nutty as a government organization. But, you know, let's try something new. Uh, maybe it will work. Maybe people's better natures will prevail and it'll just be a case of everyone building the fairest possible marketplace. And that would be beautiful. That would be a really great thing and it'd be a great experiment on this blockchain. But that's the other main thing to really keep in mind, guys, is that um, they have an internal mechanism to sort of help self-regulate any disputes. Aside from that, there's not too much else to report on Blocklancer at this time. I am pretty excited about this one just because it's essentially it's its own marketplace. It's generating a market onto itself and, and that's a beautiful thing. You know, that's really clever. Uh, not the first blockchain to do that, but, but this is really unique um, in, in the way it's forming. So hopefully they're able to raise a bunch of capital when they do launch and hopefully it's, uh, you know, it's a profitable uh, little, little new altcoin when it comes out. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. Always love having you here at the BitCash crew. Richie will be back with you tomorrow to talk about all things crypto. I will see you on Sunday for ADP's 
Forex Review. Uh, make sure you tune into that uh, this week, guys. We, we got, I think, double the reviews this week from the week before, but watch that because it's a really great way to learn the nitty gritty of trading, you know, from the ground up. So when you get into the more advanced stuff, and especially the fast moving stuff in the world of crypto, it's just much easier to manage. But yeah, I'd love to see you there on Sunday afternoon. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or if there's a particular altcoin and or uh, ICO you want me to review, just comment below. Just do it there on the YouTube or hit us up on the Twitter. And obviously the Facebook community is just exploding. So just hit us up over there. But we do love to engage in you know, with the folks in the community and just to hear from you about what's on your mind. And um, anyway, we can help you with um, your, your trading. Cool. Until next time, stay safe, stay well. Have a fantastic Friday and Saturday. I will see you on Sunday. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.